guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Reading Bear, and I hope you are ready for some more stories. And today, we'll take a look at some new entitled people content. If you enjoyed my content, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and post some bear emojis in the comment. And now, let's dive right into the stories. First one is titled. Entitled neighbor fills their recycling bin with trash and swaps it with my empty bin. I get petty. I live in a unit complex. There are 20 units with an assortment of entitled, crazy and petty people, with me being the pettiest of the bunch. There are up and downstairs units with each downstairs unit having a red bin, green bin, and a yellow recycling bin and the upstairs units having a red and yellow bin. Here's the problem with the bins. My neighbors are selfish and entitled, which is why every downstairs unit has their own green bin now instead of the one green bin we used to share, a story for another day. There are 20 units but only 10 allocated parking spaces, which causes another problem with the bins. The only place to put the bins for collection is along the street where my neighbors park their cars. Because of this, my bins aren't always collected because there was a care impeding the truck. Annoying but whatever, it is what it is. Until last week, when I was late to collect my bins. When I went out to get it, my red bin was there, empty, but my yellow bin had been replaced with a full yellow bin, complete with a sticker from council saying they won't collect it because it's full of trash. So not only did I not have my bin, but I couldn't use it as it's full to the brim with their trash. I had been stewing on this all week until yesterday when my petness got the better of me. I went around the units in search of my bin and I found it. They didn't even try to change the unit number so the search didn't take long. The type of person they are was very telling when I saw the state of their backyard. As quietly and discreetly as possible I took my bin and replaced it with theirs, but not before drawing a massive smiley face with sharp eye on top of their bin to share the love. Last one is titled, Moochers parked a trailer against our fence, stole utilities, trespassed, and harassed us. This happened in the mid to late 1980s so I don't remember all of the details fully. I will do my best to get the details right as well as I can remember. My family moved from the suburbs in California to a rural area in a southern state. We bought a 30-plus acre property with a house for a decent price out in the middle of nowhere. The roads weren't named, the roads weren't paved, no mail delivery, no trash pickup, no city water, no city sewage, etc. We had a landline and electricity. We had a well system set up for water. The system uses our electricity and our setup is old and uses a lot of power. My father was in federal law enforcement and was still trying to find his place and work up a rapport with the local police, so he didn't want to start things off by complaining or ruffling feathers. The area is one of those small-town places where Yankees were treated with suspicion, and they considered California Yankee territory. Our home was outside of the city's jurisdiction, and since there were no named roads and the 911 address system had not been set up yet, it was difficult to explain where we were if we needed to call the police. I can't remember exactly how long we'd been there, but I think it had been maybe a month or two. Our house is on a branch out a long winding road and is the dead end. Generally only people who are completely lost ever make it out here. The road enters straight in through our front gate and there is a large circular driveway that used to have a 300-year-old oak tree in the middle. The gate is more than 200 ft from our house. The yard was divided into five parts at that time. One part to the right of the front gate, as you enter the property, was a Christmas tree patch. Then there was the main yard with the house. The house was surrounded by chain-link fence and had a small front gate with a walkway and a larger side gate leading to the barnyard. There was the barnyard with a workshop and barn a chicken yard with a pond, and two back fields separated by a fence down the middle. To get to our front door you had to enter through the main front gate, go over 200 ft to the chain link fence, go up some short steps, open the chain link gate, then go at least 10 ft, probably more, to more steps onto the porch and then to the door. It's also in the middle of a forest owned by timber companies. The trees surround the perimeter of the entire property. The timber company sometimes does control burns to get rid of weeds, and such, so they have to leave a fire break between their trees and property of other people, although this didn't stop them from setting our barn on fire several times. The fire break is large enough to drive a vehicle into between trees and fence, so one day early in the morning in summer I heard banging at the front door. My room was at the front of the house, but the other two bedrooms, including my parents, was at the back of the house. We didn't have a doorbell. I looked out my window 
and saw a man at the door holding a very long extension cord extending all the way out beyond my front gate. He was shuffling impatiently and kept banging on the door. I saw him try to open it, but it was locked. I went and got my father and followed him to the door to see what was going on. Dad opened the door and looked out, somewhat annoyed. I think it was a weekend and he worked 60 plus hour weeks and needed his sleep. The guy looked a little puzzled and asked about Joe, previous owner, being there. My father said no, he moved. I'm going to heretofore refer to the man as Entitled Man. Entitled Man. Oh, well, I need to hook up my extension cord in the house. Dad, excuse me. Entitled Man. Yeah, we need power for our trailer. Dad. Looks out and sees a trailer in the fire break parked right up against our fence. Also spots a hose coming from the trailer and hooking up to one of our hose bibs for the front field. Who are you? Entitled Man. I can't remember what he said. Dad. I didn't give you permission to connect to my water and power. Entitled man. Oh, it's fine. We do this every summer. Joe said, we're always welcome. Dad, I'm Nacho. He sold the house to us, and he ever said anything about you or any arrangements. I don't know you and I want you to leave. Now. Entitled man. Argued in vain about why he should get to hook to our utilities. Dad explained he wasn't comfortable with complete strangers parked against our fence. Dude claimed it was public land, so he could park there, which was a lie. It was private property. We later found out it was actually on our property, but the fence was in the wrong place. But it would have been Timber Company's land. Ultimately, he refused to move his trailer. Dad, let me walk you out of the yard. Escorted man to the front gate, shut it behind him, chained it, then turned off water at hose bib, disconnected hose, rolled it up, and passed it over the fence to entitled man. I don't want you coming onto our property again. We don't know you. Entitled man. You're not very neighborly. You need to learn about Southern hospitality. As an aside, I will interject that the reason my dad picked a place out in the woods was to be away from people and have some privacy. I have followed him out and we walked back in. I looked back to see the guy and his wife and kid glaring at us. We went inside and locked the doors front and back. We also went through and made sure to lock all of the windows. Later that day I went to wash my hands in the sink and the water started sputtering and wouldn't come out properly. From the kitchen window I could hear one of the pumps, the one that fills our cistern, running like crazy. I unlocked the back door and walked out to the shed with the well and cistern, and saw that the float lever was down and the pump was trying to refill it. I went back in, locked the door, and went and told my dad that our cistern was low and the water wasn't working. He checked it too and then went out the front door where we could see that entitled man's hose was in our yard and hooked back up to our hose bib. He sighed and went back out to the shed and shut off the water to the front yard. We then waited for the cistern to fill enough for us to use it. We figured that entitled man would get the message and go away. Nope. Next thing we know there is a loud angry banging on our front door. I looked out and saw entitled man all red-faced and seething. I got dad's attention again and he went to the door with me. Dad unlocks and opens front door. Entitled man, screams, the water isn't working. Dad, sternly, I noticed. I told you not to connect to our utilities, and you did so anyways. You drained our cistern. I also told you to leave and locked my gate. You are trespassing. Leave now. Entitled man, you've already left us without power. What are we supposed to do without water? Dad, leave. Stepped out and escorted him to the gate again. Opened it for him, let him out. Closed it behind him and chained it. You are not welcome here. Do not set foot on my property again. I can't remember if it was that day or the next day. It's been so long I can't remember how long this lasted but I think it was a week. But the phone started ringing off the hook and we kept having people asking for entitled man or his wife. Now, we had an unlisted phone number. It was unlisted for a reason. We have no idea how they got our number. When these people called we just told them they had the wrong number. Around afternoon entitled man's wife, We'll call her Entitled Man. Came knocking on the door. I saw it was a lady, so I went to the window and asked her what she wanted. She demanded that I open the door to let her use the phone. If she had asked nicely, I might have asked my parents if it was okay and let her in, but she was rude, so I was defensive. I essentially told her to pound sand. She started banging on the window and screaming profanities at me. This got my mom's attention. Mom, don't you use that kind of language at my house? Mom doesn't like when people swear. Entitled woman, I need to use the phone and collect my messages. 
Mom, what messages? Entitled woman. We gave people the number so they can call us here. Dad, who walked in on the conversation at the window, who gave you the number? Entitled woman, refused to answer that but demanded we give her messages and let her inside. Mom, we are not your answering service and I am certainly not letting you inside my house. Now get off our property and do not come back. Entitled woman, angrily shouted profanities about what horrible people we were and how we were going to hell. I snuck outside via the back door and followed her at a distance to make sure she left and chained the gate behind her and I think I stuck my tongue out at them. At some point we went into town to visit some elderly friends of ours that had somewhat adopted us when we moved there. We were gone a few hours. When we returned, I got out and unchained the gate so dad could drive through, then shut the gate and chained it again, then skipped all the way to the house trying to race the vehicle. I was also the remote control for the TV back then. Parents said what station to turn it to and I would turn the dial. Before we could go into the house, we heard some angry shouting. Entitled man and entitled woman undid the chain and were storming toward us screaming profanities and generally cursing us. Dad, what is your problem? Entitled man, you locked your doors. Entitled woman, and your windows. We couldn't get inside. Mom and dad, of course we did. Mom, that was the point? We don't want you inside our house. We don't want you here at all. Entitled man, you are terrible hosts. Dad, you are not invited here. You are not welcome here. Now leave. Again, he escorted them to the front gate. This time, he had a shiny new padlock that we'd grabbed at the store. He put it on and told them in no uncertain terms that they were not allowed to trespass on our property for any reason again. If they were unhappy with the accommodations or lack thereof, they were free to leave. A few days later early in the morning as my father was getting ready to leave for work, we heard pounding on the door again. I alerted him as he was putting on his gun holster for work and said it was entitled man and entitled woman again. He clipped his badge onto his belt, where it would be visible, and went to the door. Being the pest that I was, I opened the door and raspberried them as they screamed and yelled about how we were horrible people, we ruined their vacation, and that, next year, we better get our act together, or there would be hell to pay. At this point, I stepped aside so my father could step out with his service weapon and badge visible. They both suddenly got quiet. Dad. How do you get into my yard of the lock gate? Entitled man and entitled woman stared in silence. Me, I think they climbed over the gate. It's sagging. They had actually messed up the gate by climbing over it to trespass. Dad, you are trespassing. You are going to leave my property now. To me, get the key. Me, ran off and grabbed the key to the padlock. I'll put them out. I then ran circles around them, sticking my tongue out and pissing them off, but they were too afraid to say much to me. I zipped ahead of them, unlocked the gate, dragged it open, and told them to get out and stay out. I may have stuck my thumbs in my ears and wiggled my fingers while saying, neener, neener, neener. I slammed the gate behind them and padlocked the chain again. They angrily left, but not before banging their trailer into our gate, flipping me off, and laying on the horn for a couple minutes before they finally left. That weekend my dad had me help him collect branches, old fencing material. He made sure I didn't touch the barbed wire, but he picked it up and showed me how to build a barricade, just the way he learned in the army. Did I mention he was also a Vietnam veteran? We built it a few feet from the road so it would block anyone from trying to drive in and park at the fire break. The other side had a power pole in the way so no one could get a vehicle through there. The next summer we were awoken to angry horn honking, pounding on the door and shouting. I looked out to see a truck with a trailer in our driveway at the gate, which had still been padlocked and chained was open, entitled woman, was in the passenger seat hitting the horn, and entitled man was at the door. I went to get my father and told him the jerks with the trailer were back and they somehow opened our gate. He got up and went to the door. Before he could even speak, entitled man was shouting at him. Entitled man, there's a bunch of branches and stuff piled up near the road. Dad, so? Entitled man, we can't get in to park our trailer. Dad, good. Entitled man, you won't think that when I burn your ducking house down. Dad, in a low quiet tone that used to scare the crap out of people. Are you threatening a law enforcement agent? I don't remember the response, but he followed with. It would be a shame if I had to call my friend, Sheriff Turner, to have you arrested. By this point, he had developed a very good rapport with the police. To the point they said they would be willing to hold a someone still while he beat them up and they would swear the person fell down the stairs. 
entitled man, duck you. Dad, that's nice, now get off my property and don't ever come back, or I will have you arrested. While the conversation was happening, I got some paper and pencil and wrote down the license plate number of the truck and trailer, no, I don't still have it. I handed it to my father and said that we could give that to the police. Entitled man angrily got in his truck, pounded on the horn a few times, and drove off in a huff. We never saw him again. We found he'd cut the chain on our gate to get in. Dad called the sheriff and gave him a heads up about what happened and gave out the license plate numbers and description of the vehicles just in case there were any problems in the future. They may or may not have been pulled over and ticketed in just about every town in the county. As an addendum, in the early 2000s the barricade was still there, but the power company needed to access the pathway. They had to use heavy machinery to clear it and it took them a few hours. My father just sat on the porch swing with a cup of water admiring the effort it took to remove his work and smiled. Editing to clarify, when the police made the offer to hold someone still while he could beat them up, he was mortified. It is not something that he or I condoned. They were dead serious about it but my father declined and said that wouldn't be necessary. I was just bringing that up to show just how much they liked him and were willing to back him up. Thanks for listening.